Hello friends, welcome to this 10th video on mathematical logic. We are going to see about laws of algebra of proposition in this video. We already have seen about laws of algebra for our set theory. The laws are very much identical to the one which we saw in set theory. Only the substitutions which we need to make over here is that whenever we have union this union is going to be replaced with your disjunction and your intersection will now be replaced with your conjunction. The universal set will now be replaced with a truth value and the null set or the empty set will be replaced with that of a false. So if we are going to make suitable replacements for our set theory laws the same nine laws by the same names we have seen then obviously we need not have to by heart this law separately for our logics it's going to work perfectly well now we can see that this is going to be called as your primal that is your base statement and the statement which is got by replacing your V with wedge and your wedge with V, your true with false and a false with true will be referred by the name called as dual. So this set of statements which we have will be called as the dual statement the statements which are primal if it is going to be true will suitably replaced by these quantities called as dual is also equivalently true. So we say that this operation on replacing a V with which so you can see V replaced with which a false with true a true with false and a which with V will now give us the statement called as dual. Now the laws which we can uh, verify through the true table if we want or you can uh, if you are comfortable with the set theory notation you can very well do that. We know that A union A the union of two sets which is identical is going to be the same A. Now we have the proposition P, P or P is also going to be equal to P. Now A intersection your null set is going to be what is common to A and null set there is going to be nothing. So when I replace this P conjunction F this will be the same as my F. So I have P conjunction F to be equivalent to F. So we see that item potent law identity, dominant, complement, commutative, associative, distributive, absorption and de Morgan are going to be the same things which we have done in our laws of set theory. Just replace these equivalent terms then you need not have to separately by heart them. You can get the same over here. You need to just remember three to four laws in your mind frequently so that we will be comfortable doing problems commutative law which says that A union B is the same as B union A. So what we have is P or Q is the same as Q or P. Okay and for the dual you will have P and Q is the same as Q and P. Now when it is two element you flip it it is called as commutative law. So what is meant by associative law? Associative law is nothing but with respect to three elements A union B union C will be the same as A union B union C and for intersection A intersection B intersection C is the same as A intersection B intersection C. Now over here we will not be writing equal to, we are using the equivalent to statement. Equivalence meaning if A then B is going to be equivalently true for me. So with equal to sign will be replaced with equal. 
So when we have three elements, you call it to be associative law. When it is with respect to two elements, you call it as commutative law. The next is going to be your De Morgan's law. De Morgan's law, which states that A union B, the whole bar equal to A bar. Union will now change as intersection, and this will be B bar. So this is P. Union is R, Q. the whole bar so it is negation bar is turned out as negation this will be negation p intersection so you change it as conjunction negation q negation p or negation q and when we have it to be negation of p and q this will be equivalent to negation p or negation q this will flip automatically when this negation is taken separately for these two variable negation can also be denoted by this symbol or it can also denoted by this symbol so if question paper happens to have these kind of notation please note that it is the same as your negation of the quantity and the last one is going to be our distributive law which has the combination of both and and the or operator which says p that is uh, we will have a union b intersection c to be a union b intersection a union c so it is p or q and r so it will be p or q and p or r so one is going to be the union symbol and the one will be your intersection symbol in which case it distributes over the quantity so we say it is going to be p or q and p or r so just memorize these four formulas and now we will be able to comfortably solve for much of our problem next comes the formulas that involve equivalences involving conditional what do you mean by conditional statement a statement of the form if p then q if p then q is called as conditional so whenever we have if p then q it is equivalent to negation p or q okay so this will be one formula we will be throughout using in the problems so make sure this is being memorized for the other one is nothing but you can just flip it contra positive and say that if p then q is equivalent to when you take it to the opposite side negation q then negation p and if you have this portion to your left hand side that is also equivalent to negation p or q is equivalent to p or q so it is equivalent statement which means a implies b as well as b implies your a now comes a p going to q and a p going to r p goes to both of them a q and r so you can write p goes to q and r so in the second case p goes to q or p goes to r so you can write p goes to q or r this a statement is p going to r and there are going to be two variables p goes to r as well as q goes to r in which case this and will be replaced with or so what happens is p or q goes to r now if you have a or over here that gets replaced as and over here in which case we say that p r q r p or r goes to uh, p or q goes to r will now be read as p and q will go to r so these are the formulas involving your conditional statement but though we have nine we will be frequently using the first one if p then q is equivalent to negation p or q so just by heart this one alone the next set of statement is those involving biconditional biconditional is a two sided arrow p if and only if q that is a combination of if p and q as well as a if q then p so this and can be replaced with a conjunction that's what we have p going to q and q going to p 
so p double headed by conditional q is equivalently negation p double headed negation q so these statements are going to be um uh, logically true but when it comes to problem we will be most probably using just the laws of propositions and and in particularly these four laws more frequently and this equivalence law alone to solve much of our problem okay so we will now get started to solve problems now there will be a line which in particularly says in your question paper you will have to solve without using truth table so that is going to be a particular point over here which means you will have to use the laws for solving it okay so the first question we will have what is it a p going to q going to r i will have to show that this is going to be equivalent to a uh, p and q then r okay so we will start with it so we will keep one formula which we wanted this is a p then q formula so this is equivalent to negation p or q we will keep this mind and then we will start working on it so i start with p going to q going to r everywhere you will have to use equal and sign not an equal to sign so i first change the bracket so p uh, q goes to r now q goes to r will now be equivalently written as negation q r r so this is going to be negation q r r now this i take as p and entirely as q so again applying the same row negation p or negation q or r now here also i have v here also i have v the symbol is the same so i can use which law so symbol is same means three elements are there so i can use associative law over here i have law, use the laws of equivalence here i use associative law so that i club negation p or negation q together and d my r separately now negation is common to both of them when i pull out a negation outside what will happen this or operator will change as and operator and this law is what we refer as de morgan's law and now the last part of it whenever we have negation of a quantity or a q then i can write it as if p then q this is negation of a quantity or r so i can rewrite this as p and q then your r it is by equivalence and hence we have proved the problem for the given statement we will do one more problem of the same sort so that you get accustomed to this part a p then q and uh, r and q is going to be equivalent to p or r then q okay so we will try proving this so again we need to keep in mind the formula we are going to frequently use is p going to q is negation p or q so this is the equivalent form we are going to use it okay now start a p and q lhs so this is negation p or q for my first term and for the second term i use negation r or q the same formula <coughs> one is over v the other one is going to be bridge two different symbols which means i will have to use distributive law in my next line let me use distributive law so q is common so that will come outside the different elements over here gets added up as negation p and negation r together or q so this becomes my distributive law so that p distributes over q as well as r distributes over q now in the next stage negation p and negation r i take my negation common outside so i will be left out with p this conjunction will now turn out as disjunction of r using which law this law is called as de morgan's law now i have it of the format negation p or q so this negation p will now be replaced as 
P, V, R, and so then a Q by the laws of equivalence. I suppose this kind of problem without using truth table has now become a much easier one for you people to work with. Happy learning, keep learning.